All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. This is Mr. McCaffrey, and uh, we're going to be moving on now to example number four, uh, continuing on our logarithmic functions and uh, graphs. Aye. All right, so what we're going to do now in uh, this example is we're going to uh, graph two functions. First is, is this guy right here, and, that, and that's f of x equals 2 to the power of x. And then we're going to graph uh, f of x, which is log base 2 of x. And we're going to make a staunch, awesome, off-the-hook conclusion. Something really powerful about logs and um, exponential functions. We're, we're going to say something really neat. So uh, what I did here was I created a table of values for each one. And then I'm going to um, graph them here. So on your notes, you're going to want to pause it and go ahead and create a table of values and then maybe create a nice coordinate plane that you can graph here. So uh, now we can actually graph this on our calculator, but it says scratch the graph by hand. So, um, but you know, like right now you could put this, you know, to the power of X in your calculator and it'll graph it for you. Uh, however, this is log base two of X. Uh, that's a little tricky there if you're going to try to do that on a calculator. But uh, let's go ahead and see how this is going to work uh, right here. So, uh, right here, this is where we're going to we're going to plug in our x value. Oh, I guess I should have a marker ready to go. So right here, I'm going to have my x value. So I'll pick my x value. Here, I'm going to do the work, meaning I'm going to plug it in, right? I'm going to plug it into x, and then out pops my my f of x value, meaning my y value, right? So I don't know. Uh, let's just let's just maybe start with uh, negative two. So if I plug in negative two, I get two to the negative two. Okay, well, let's make sure we understand what that means, right? That means 1 over 2 squared. So there we get uh, 1 fourth. Okay. Um, let's just, you know, you know, maybe keep continuing down from there. So let's start with negative 1. So then that's 2 to the negative 1. And so that's the same thing as uh, 1 over 2 to the 1 power. But we don't need to put that 1 right there. It's not necessary. And let's just keep going here. 0 to the power of 0. Well, I know is one, and let's see if I can squeeze a few more in here. Let's try one. If I plug in one right there, we're gonna get uh, two to the power one is two, and let's put one more two right there, and uh, two to the power of two, and then we're gonna get four. All right, so let's go ahead and <clears throat> graph this here. All right, so these are our coordinate points, right? Negative two, one, four. Negative one, one half. Zero, one. 1, 2, 2, 4. These are our, our coordinate points right here. Let's see what kind of graph that this is going to create. So negative 2 and 1, 4. So we go to negative 2. Now, you know, when this is 1, 4, there's no way to precisely put them on the graph. So I'm just going to put a little dot like right there, right? So negative 2, 1, 4. This is going to be, you know, uh, less than halfway, obviously, because it's only a quarter. But And then uh, negative 1 and then a half. So negative 1, I'm going to put that right there, a half. Now, 0, 1. So 0, 1 right there. Okay. Uh, 1, 2. So 1, 2. 2, 4. Go to 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'll just do one more here. Say if I plug in 3, well, 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, and this graph hopefully is not is not brand new to you because you would have seen something like this in algebra two, and uh, here maybe I'll do this in a different color here. So our graph is going to look something like this. Yes, that's supposed to go through those points. That is horrible. Can I just say that is horrible right there? And I guess it's kind of hard to write this on the slate. I think of this as being a continuous curve that is going through all of those points right there. Sorry for the horribleness. But you could use your imagination. Okay. And um, let's just think about this real quick. Do you think that this graph is going to touch the x-axis? Maybe some of you are saying yes. Some of you are saying no. Well, if we think about this, think of like, I mean, even if you did like negative, plug in like negative, you know, 10 for x. So say if I plug in negative 10 for x, so that means I'm going to plug in uh, 2 to the negative 10 right and then that means so that means you know that's going to be like our function value so that means 1 over 2 to the 10 that's a really small number right that's 1 over 
that's one over two with you know ten zeros, right? I mean, that's like a lot of zeros right there. So that's a crazy, crazy small number, right? So that's gonna get super, super, super close. And I mean crazy close to the x-axis. However, will it touch it? No. And that's right. The answer is no. So this right here is what we call an an asymptote. Okay, it's a line. Asymptote. It's it's a line that the graph will never touch. So this graph will never touch this line right here, and and this equation of this line right here is going to be f of x equals zero, or like y equals zero, right? It will never touch that. So just one cool thing to see here is that we have an asymptote, which means it's a line that our graph. Our function will never touch. It'll get so close to it. It'll get super crazy close, but it'll never touch it, though. And then uh, this guy will just keep continuing out forever and ever. Okay, so we graphed um, f of x equals 2 to the power of x by hand. Now let's take a look at our logarithm, our log base 2 of x. We're going to go ahead and uh, graph that guy. Um, let me show you something real quick just so that you can catch what I really want you to, to get here. Okay, Say if I asked you to convert this exponential form into a logarithm. Doesn't this mean log base 2 of x, right? We always take this, we always, to the power of x, so it's log base 2 of x. I mean, that's what that, right? And then, and then this right here, is our f of x right here, right? So this is the inverse of this. And I'm going to show you what that means when I say inverse, okay? But I just want you to see the relationship between our log base 2 to the power of x and our log base 2 to the power of x and then our 2 to the power of x. They have a crazy relationship between these two. And basically what that means is this, an inverse is when you switch the coordinate point. So if this coordinate point right here is negative 2, 1 fourth, then this coordinate point down here, check this out, is going to be 1 fourth and then negative 2. You just switch them. And so let's see, this would be our x. This would be our log base 2 of x. And then this would be our f of x value. So you switch these right here. Okay, and if you're like, well, what do you mean? You know, I mean, how do you know if you plug in one fourth, you get negative two? Well, watch this. Let's plug it in real quick. What's log base two of one fourth? Well, let's go down over here. What does that mean? This right here means two to the power of what is one fourth? Two to the power of what is one fourth? Well, isn't that x equals negative two, right? 2 to, two to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. So look, ah, I plug in 1 fourth and I get negative 2. Oh, oh, you were tricky me right there. And, uh, so now what happens, so watch this. We can just take these two points. A half, if that was our y value, then that means our x value is going to be negative 1. So we don't need to create th th these points by hands. These two are inverses of each other. So let's just continue our pattern here. So uh, this is 0, 1, so, so this must be 1, 0. Uh, this is 1, 2, so that means this point must be 2, 1. And then conversely, it would be 4, 2. Now watch what happens when we graph this guy now, because uh, every inverse that you graph always happens like this. So check this out. Now let's see. So 1 fourth negative 2. Again, that's going to be really hard to graph negative or a positive one fourth, so just kind of go like a little bit and then go to negative two. So it's going to be really close there, right? A half, negative one. So a half and then like negative one. So it's going to be somewhere like right there. It's going to be super close, but again, fractions, you can't make them perfect. So, oh well, well you know, it's right there in the middle. Uh, and then we go down here, one zero. One zero. And then right here, uh, two one. Two one. And then four two. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. And then let's just do this other point over here again. And that was eight, eight, uh, three there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. I'm going to get rid of this little guy here that I wrote down earlier. Okay, so check this out. I don't know if you 
are seeing this here, let me maybe do this like in you know different color here. Uh, let's see, we'll go over there. So look at the way that this graph looks. Again, sorry, writing on the slate here isn't the best thing, but hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. These two graphs are inverses. And I don't know if you guys see this here, that this is a reflection. This is a reflection across the line. And I'll do some more over here. This is a reflection. It's really horrible again. Across the line y equals x. Okay, this is, why is that so thick right there? I'm not sure, guys, but let me try that again. I don't know. Here, uh, this is the line y equals x. Okay, every, let me say again, every inverse is always reflected across this line. I mean, if you were to fold a piece of paper like this, this point goes there, that point goes there, that point goes there. So there's a, a reflection. So it's just a really cool relationship between um, inverses is that when you graph them, they will always have a reflection across uh, y equals x. And so uh, there we have our graph of uh, y equals uh, 2 to the power of x and log of base 2 of x.